Welcome to the Even Better Podcast, where your host, Seneca Waugh of Your Clear Next Step, brings you exciting content about making communities better by helping people get even better at work. Thank you so much for joining in. This is Seneca Waugh at Your Clear Next Step, and this is the Even Better Podcast, part of our ongoing mission here at Your Clear Next Step to help us all have even better work days. I am so delighted today to have as a guest on our podcast, Haley McElhenney. She started with us as a Simpson College intern years ago and graduated from Simpson College in the mysterious and the uncertain times of spring of 2020. She is currently has a a day job. She spends her full time as an HR specialist for a skincare production company in Southeast Iowa, but has had such a wonderful journey with us here at your clear next step that in addition to her job there as an HR specialist and her pursuit of her master's degree uh, along her journey and her coaching for college athletics, she also has continued to maintain her role with us at your clear next step as our podcast producer. So Haley, Thank you so much for being a guest on our podcast that you have been the behind the scenes producer for all these years. Yeah, thanks for having me. I am excited. I'm definitely excited, but it will be an interesting take for sure. (laughs) This is great. I am so delighted to have you as part of this story because I think I think it's really a fascinating journey and and I love bringing you closer to the microphone instead of just on the editing side, because I think it's important for our listeners to hear part of your story and part of your journey. Because if I recall correctly, when you were studying at Simpson College, you were not studying communications and media production, right? Correct. I was not. No, (laughs) you did not dream of producing podcasts. No, that was not in the game plan. No, <laughs> not at all. And when you were doing your internship with us, you you started in, and you was, you spent some time with us as an intern, just doing wonderful work with us as a team. But you weren't doing the podcast as your as your regular intern job. Not entirely. No, it was way scaled back. I would say. Absolutely. And so then when you took over the podcast actually, and and made it your own, that was after graduation, after the uncertainty of 2020 and kind of the mystery of what's going to happen next. And and we started to sort of find our groove. And then there was a moment where you raised your hand and you said, yeah, I could own that. I could, I could do that. I could, I could do the podcast. That's a, that's a piece that I could own. And I don't know what your thoughts were at that moment, but I remember thinking, this is it. Haley, with her ability to to just carve things off and and take ownership of those beginning, middle, and end, to take ownership of the podcast, maybe if our our listeners could understand a little bit better what that means, and and we can do just a little bit of introduction on what that means. You have have ownership of the, the podcast production piece. What does that mean for you so our listeners can understand? Yeah, so... Just to kind of start from the beginning, when I joined as an intern, I knew there was a possibility that I'd be getting my hands on some capacity of the podcast. They would not know what that was all going to entail. Prior to me, there was Cammie, and Cammie did amazing with podcasts. So I got to listen to Cammie's work, and that was intimidating. Coming in with no experience in communications, video production, podcast production, I guess, if you will. So that was really intimidating. And I remember meeting Cammie in the student center at Simpson, just going over everything and being like, okay, taking notes, lots of notes, lots of notes. And growing from that position to where I'm at now with podcasts, where I can feel comfortable, like Seneca has this list of people, I have their emails, I feel comfortable, I'm going to shoot an email, Seneca might be busy, Aaron might be busy, I'll just copy them on, let's get things rolling. The confidence that has come from start to here, I think has really helped in the ownership part of it, just growing in that aspect. And I'll get more into that as we talk. That has been a big part of kind of owning the podcast. The other part of it, like you mentioned, I just kind of stumbled into this. (laughs) And so a lot of it is kind of like, I wouldn't say faking it till you make it because I've kind of been upfront with like, I'm willing to learn. And there's been no faking. It's just learning as you go, really. And that's kind of the take I've had with it anyways, stumbling into it and just trying new things. You're always really great about during our one-on-ones or our company meetings. What could we do different? What can, and you know, you let me throw out my opinions, which is kind of how we got to this point, even talking about, you know, when we're in a scheduling lull and we need people luckily you have a company with great coaches and a lot of great people have great ideas 
I threw out, Hey, why don't we ask, you know, some of our coaches or our trainers, if we're in a lull, can we schedule out some time to talk about one of your specific promotions or skills or something that they train? And that's kind of how we got to hear after that conversation. You're like, Hey, why don't you do a podcast? And I was like, Hey, again, never done it. Let's stumble our way into this one. So that's kind of how I've gotten to just take ownership. And I'd say confidence has really been the driving force there, helping me just realize, you know, I've learned it to this point. I can maybe grow it to this point. Absolutely. So I think what we're looking at here, the concept and the, the, this, the theme of this interview, or they're, they're kind of three surprising ways you've grown by editing a podcast. And I just think it's so cool. It's, it's so practical. It's not, it's not because editing a podcast. So if, if you're listening right now and you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm never, never going to edit a podcast. Well, I believe that a number of years ago, Haley would have been sitting in a chair thinking to herself, well, I'm never going to edit a podcast. And that is simply not the case, right? There, here she is editing a podcast, but it's not about the content. It's not about the act of editing a podcast. It's the, it's the process and the journey of trying something new, of, of stumbling into something, of taking advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you and then learning from that and growing from that. And then from time to time, really stopping and looking back and saying, whoa, what have I learned here? How have I grown? What are the things, what are the skills that I can add to my repertoire now? What are the things that I can say I can do? What are the, what are the ways that I personally and professionally have grown and, and matured? And, and how does that make me an even better human than I was three years ago or, or yesterday for heaven's sakes. So that's what we're talking about. Three surprising ways that Haley, that, that I have grown, that Haley has grown, right? The three surprising ways to grow from something like editing a podcast. So let's dive right in. Your first one, Haley, the first one that the first way that you've grown is through patience. Well, I, that is a place where I would love to grow. So let's talk about that. How has your patience grown? Yeah, absolutely. So like I kind of mentioned in the beginning, it started with me and Cami in the student center, her teaching me the ropes. Like I said, at the time it was very intimidating because it was an established podcast with an established audience. And at the time, like it was a lot of your clients. So it already had an established reputation, very established podcast, as you can tell. <laughs> so learning the keys, you know, a lot of it, I was qualified purely from the fact that I had an Apple computer that had GarageBand. <laughs> so trying to figure out the shortcuts in GarageBand or the command T, I use that every time to cut and delete and finding along the way, new tricks and tips of drags and replacing. I remember the first real big edit I had to do there was a dog barking. I was like, how am I going to, how am I going to get rid of this? You know, just, and I am not a professional podcast editor or even noise production specials of any kind. So there's a lot of ways that I would say, even someone with no experience kicking it around those things. And sometimes we have to re-record bits and that's okay. And we slap them in there. No one ever knows, but the patience that goes behind just learning the keys, learning what works best with my skills and my speed on the podcast. I know a lot of the times when I first started, I was scared to hit a certain key because all of a sudden something would pop up. I'm like, did I lose the audio? Did I crash this? You know, you don't, I, you don't know. And so just kind of that kind of builds in with the confidence to being patient with yourself, having a backup recording document is key. Like we do <laughs> just in case for those, those slip ups or something, always saving at the critical times so that you've made a lot of progress, stuff like that. And if you're going to try something new, just have a copy ready to go. That is saved. The other part of patience, I would say there's two more small parts. I put in here, the um, buts, ahs, and pauses, which this whole podcast, since we've already started, I hear the ums and I'm like, I'm going to get that in a week. I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> going through editing other podcasts and feeling like you have a flow and then there's an um, or there's a, uh, or there, there's something that just doesn't flow with the audio. Having to stop if you're in a flow of your own kind of can get a little frustrating, but I'd say the longer I've done this now, it's like, oh, click, click, click. Good. There goes the um. Or like I said earlier, when I'm trying new methods, I can do just a split in the screen and then drag it, whatever's comfortable. But I would say that when I first started it, I'd every um, pause, uh, I would hear, I'd always be like, oh, and then worried I'd missed one. The patience that I have now versus when I started, you know, it's just a quick fix. It's, it's an um, we'll move on. <laughs> They'll never know. 
just will know. <laughs> so that is one big thing. And then the last part of that patience, I would say almost primarily at my end anyway, the communication on podcasts for the most part is email. There are those times where you meet someone in person and they just have a really good attitude or spirit. And you're like, that would be great. You have a great energy almost mm-hmm. to bring to the podcast. And so those instances, then we get an email and follow up. But it's just understanding and having patience with everyone that everyone has a schedule of their own, a life of their own, and tendencies of their own. They may not check their emails. I check my emails even on the weekends because my personal email on the weekends. Why? Because I like to just know what I'm getting into come Monday. I like to know where my newest package is at on the map. I like (laughs) to know different subscriptions I've signed up for. Like, not everybody wants some people it's Friday at 4 30 and I will see that email inbox Monday at 8 30 and that's just understanding that you might not be the priority on their list and that just having patience that they will come back out and reach out to you and if not it never hurts to like reach out to them because they will also appreciate the fact that you were patient and didn't email them three times a day trying to just line up a podcast schedule (laughs) (laughs) right For sure. When I'm thinking about the patience that comes with learning and the the trial and error and the trial and error that sometimes when we want, when we want results, right, we want something to be perfect. It doesn't come out perfect when we're learning a new skill. It it doesn't, it's not perfect. The first time I was doing something with my daughter this recently at at the gym, and she's trying to teach me a, a new exercise or a new fitness routine. And she makes it look so easy. And I'm a you know, a few years older than she is and a bit out of practice. And so we're doing something and, and I want the immediate results and I want it to be perfect. And it, it's not going to be perfect, right? You just you trial and error. You just you got to try it and you got to be patient with the results. And I just, I think about the, the patience that it takes and that I know you applied in those early days of just, okay, we're just going to try this. And, and then we're just going to keep at it. We're gonna keep at it. And now to your point, the things that, that before would have taken you minutes or, or hours now are, are a matter of seconds or moments, right. As opposed to minutes or hours, it it gets faster, it gets easier. And and as it does when you're learning any new skill. Exactly. Yeah. You bet. So three surprising things you've learned by editing a podcast. First one was patience, Haley. The second one is understanding. Let's talk about that one. I, I think you were hinting a little bit about it on the communication, the, the awareness that we've all got kind of different styles and different approaches and different schedules. But but tell me, tell me more about understanding. You've got more there. Yeah, absolutely. This might be my favorite one in the three points, just because you have such a great network mm-hmm. and you've had so many unique guests come on. And in the early days, I would get to meet the guests via Zoom mm-hmm. briefly in this setting. Now I don't get that opportunity yet when I'm editing the podcast, just from the brief emails and just listening to the recording and listening to your guys's conversation, I feel like I have a professional relationship. I feel like I've known them and that we are having this conversation just because of the authenticity of their energy and their meaning behind what they're saying. Like they're coming on your podcast because they care about what they have to say. And so it's really fun for that. And in that aspect, bringing all these different people on the things that I've just learned. I get to listen to every single podcast. That is the perk of being the editor is I get to listen to every single thing behind the scenes and for everyone. I think everyone should do that. So listeners, make sure you share and listen to all of our podcasts because all of our guests have really, really great insights. But there's so many times that I'll like stop the editing and I'll be like, that was good. And I remember several times I've been editing and I'm like, I, I needed to hear that. Mm. That is really resonating with me. That is really giving me a new perspective or solidifying a perspective I already had or completely crushing a perspective I already had. And so I really appreciate those moments. And actually throughout my master's class, I would use the podcast as a reference in posts or papers. There's just been so many good ones where I'm like, These people, everyone has an experience that they can share that is going to impact someone else. Mm -hmm. You may not feel like something you've done will impact someone else. And it might not even have to be something you've done. It could be something that you've just gone through, any kind of experience. 
someone out there is going to either relate to you now or in the future or in the past. And that's going to help them in more ways than people actually know. And that is one of my favorite things is the perspective and the understanding that your guests have brought to me without even knowing it. So yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. That is so cool, Haley. And I, I'm thinking about the the guests that that have been on and the the conversations that I've had. It's, it's some of my favorite moments in the last couple of years have been recording the podcasts and these these just quiet conversations that I get to have with people and and hear them talk about their very favorite topics and the things they're most passionate about. And and some sometimes to your point, that I was in a conversation the other day with a, a gentleman that, who's going to be a guest soon because we were in this conversation. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. This has to be a podcast episode because I could just see the energy and I could just see how excited he was about this. I said, we've got we've to gotta reposition this because you gotta, you got to come on the podcast because our listeners need to hear this. Yes. And, and those moments, I just, I love that. I love that you see that or you hear that too in their, in their journeys. Oh, that's super cool. So I'm going to do a second plug from what Haley just said. If you haven't listened, if you're, if you're listening to this right now, and this is your first or your fifth or your 15th podcast, go back to the beginning. Cause there've been a heck of a lot more than 15, go back to the beginning, listen to all of them. And we're in the fifties now too. So got a lot of catching up to do, but it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And they're all, they're all kind of in, in that 25 to 38 minute time window. So all less than an hour, a good, good workout, good walk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And all different kinds of life lessons and ways to be even better. Nice. There's an outlet for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we are here. If you're just joining in at some point, you're going to have to rewind and go back to the beginning because you got to hear the rest of this, but we are here with Haley McElhenney and we are talking about three surprising ways that she's grown by editing a podcast. And first one was patience. The second one was understanding. And we're moving on to the third one, which is opportunity. Let's talk about that one. So the opportunity of this in more ways than one basic is opportunity to grow. In November, 2019 is when I started as an intern with Your Clear Next Step. I would not have guessed I would still be here at any of podcasts in 2022. There was times there like 2020 happened and we had to be let off. And then Seneca reached back out and was like, I still need help. We can have interns again. We, we've always had the need for them. We didn't have necessarily the resources to have them at the time, but we came back. And I was hands-off podcast there for a while. We were doing some outbound calling and stuff like that, but I stuck with it. I really enjoyed it. And then podcast came back up. And so now it was kind of like talking to my other boss about going full-time. That was my deal breaker. I was like, can I keep my other job? The opportunity that I came from stumbling into, sure, I'll take on podcasts for you in 2019. And now I am the podcast producer in 2022 within the same company. That is just a huge opportunity that I would never have taken if I didn't just try to try something new. So that is one big thing that I would say comes from the opportunity. The other thing from that, like I mentioned previously, the understanding, the opportunity to open yourself up to new ideas and perspectives and thoughts can really just help you understand yourself better, everyone else better. And it just makes, I feel for like a happier person. You're not so angry because you don't understand that. Well, it's okay to not understand that. It's okay to try. It's okay if you don't understand and you're not getting there. It's okay to be open about that and communicate, hey, I don't understand. I think understanding is really important in all aspects of life, not just professional. I think personal too, you need to try to have an understanding. And this has given me the opportunity to have more understanding. Mm. And then the network side of it, like I said, I get to, I get to meet a lot of really cool people through YCNS and the podcast specifically. And so that's been really, really fun for me. Nice. Yeah. The, the network that you've expanded, I know at the beginning you did get to be on screen a little bit, especially back in the, in the early days when I was like, okay, I don't think my brain can handle talking to people and pushing the record button at the same time. <laughs> now, now, you know, two years into, to, into all of this, the, I can, I can push record and talk at the same time. Turns yeah. out I can handle it. But you did get to meet them, but now at least you get the, the virtual connection and uh, hopefully you're taking advantage of that opportunity to connect on LinkedIn and, and build those connections and those relationships there and, and follow up. And when you have the, 
the podcast go public and it, it, we announce it there that you're, I've seen you respond on social media that, Hey, that public, that uh, podcast went live, love the insights that you were sharing on that. And so I, I just, I really celebrate the way that you're, you're doing that. You're taking advantage of growing your network there, which I think is so valuable. It, it's not just that you see that the opportunity is there. You're, you're capitalizing on it. You're, you're, you're taking good advantage of the opportunities presented to you. So I, I really want to commend you for that and, and celebrate that and just encourage our listeners as well that when those opportunities are there, if there's a chance to take a risk and try something new, I mean, like do it. So you get to learn a new skill and you get to grow your network. If, if an opportunity is there that's presented to you to, to meet someone new and to build a network, do it, the, the, build those networks because you, you just never know where those opportunities will lead you. And certainly, of course, I'm going to say this because of how strongly and passionately I feel about professional development. But imagine that you had an opportunity to learn a new skill, meet new people. Oh yeah. And the entire job involved immersing yourself in professional development for, you know, that was the job. Oh yeah. Do that. Yeah, <laughs> then you can grow. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Well, this has been great. I just, I, I appreciate your being willing to share your story about the, because I, I think we go, I go back to that same point that it doesn't it wouldn't have to be a podcast producer. Like I, I'm not advocating that everyone out there go look for an opportunity to be a podcast producer, but I am advocating that if you're listening to this podcast right now, and there's an opportunity in front of you to try something new, to, to take a risk, to, to, to do something you've maybe never done before, or to, to take ownership of a portion of your job that maybe, maybe it's a little scary, maybe it's new and different, but it, it could be something that, Go, go and try it. And then at some point, stop and look back at how far you've come and what you've learned. Because I, I, I just listening to your story, Haley, I just think you have so much to offer from that. Thank you. I, I enjoy it. It's fantastic. So this would not be the even better podcast if I didn't ask the question, how about you personally, Haley? What's making you even better these days? Yes, I love this question because I get to hear everyone else's. And then when I was preparing it for myself, I was like, this, this is a good one. This is kind of a hard one. It stumps you a little bit. So kudos to all of our guests that come on fully prepared. I now understand what we put you through. <laughs> and I wasn't sure which direction I was going to take this. But I think right now, you know, I did not have the traditional college graduation. I was supposed to graduate in May 2020 and COVID postponed that. The rescheduled date was for the date of our wedding. So I was not able to attend that one. And then the second rescheduled date was the date of conference golf for where I was coaching. And I'm big on commitments and I had already committed to that team. So I went to conference golf. I finally did get a graduate and walk across the stage from a master's back in May. So that was an experience and it was fun. But for me, things weren't going as like planned. Like I didn't, I, I'm a big supporter of Simpson College still, and I always will be. And I expected to walk across that stage with the red and the gold with all of my classmates. And I didn't do that. And then I, you know, stumbled into this and I love this and I'm still doing this and I'm happy to be doing this. But I also stumbled into masters. I didn't plan to get my masters. It was unforeseen times and it was a job and it got me the opportunity to switch from player to coach. And I really, I enjoyed that. I'm going to continue doing that now that I've graduated, I'll just be an assistant. And then I was reached out to by a family friend about, you know, hey, I'm, I've started working at this company and we're growing and we need an HR person. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll come interview and see. And, you know, they asked me, so when can you start? And I said, whenever. And then I like, come tomorrow. And then, you know, so I've been with them ever since, too. I'm just really good at not saying no is what I've kind of come to. Maybe that's what's making me even better. But <laughs> the real thing that I think that is making me even better, and I have a short story for it, is that I'm trying to disconnect myself and find that work-life balance. Mm. That has been something that I feel lucky enough that has actually been discussed when I was a student. Mm. And when we got to like tour different, you know, companies and organizations, that was already on the horizon. People were working towards that. So it wasn't a foreign concept to me and my generation. It was something that we were almost like, hey, this is this is new and up and coming and it's going to be big for you guys. And I really think it is. I think it work-life balance is huge for my generation, especially. 
And so the thing that I am doing to make myself even better is to just still live a full life outside of work. And I'm struggling with that. And I'm still trying to make that transition. So for example, Monday nights, my husband, Dane and I, we signed up for Walker's League. It's a golf league where you go out and walk nine holes with everyone else who signed up. And it's fun. It's exercise. So it's good physical health. It's good mental health because I'm talking to people. I'm out in the sunshine, which is great. I get to play some golf. Tuesday nights, we do a slow pitch softball league, which is fun and a very humbling experience. Now, you know, (laughs) turning the corner towards 25, not as equipped as I used to be for that, but it's still fun to get out and get your body moving. But it was, I think last week, just a short story, it was a Wednesday night and I was getting ready to leave to go to Okoboji with my parents on Thursday afternoon. And I was like, well, I know I have to pack, but in order to pack, I have to have clean clothes. And I tell her I have clean clothes. I got to do laundry. And I really want to clean the house a little bit because I want to come home to a nice clean house. And it was just a long list of things I didn't want to do. And we didn't have anything scheduled that night. And so that night with all the things I didn't want to do, ended up being one of my favorite nights that week. And it was therapeutic for me. My husband, Thane and I took turns, you know, doing a chore, vacuuming or starting a load of laundry or folding a load of laundry. And we'd go back and forth between a chore and playing Um, (laughs) Pac-Man. Recently become quite the Pac-Man fans and have been playing a lot of Pac-Man. I don't know how that got started, but that I remember like going to bed that night and be like, my cup is pretty full right now. Like I, I started this day down, just down, not sure, you know, what I'm doing with my life. Am I questioning my, my, you know, is this what I'm called to do? What's my passion? And I was like, I might not have the answers yet, but I don't need them yet. I can still stumble my way through (laughs) to find those. But I know that taking this time and doing these little things did help to fill my cup. And so ever since then, I've been trying to just, you know, carve out some time, whether that's take a little break and just to get some sunshine on my face or read a chapter of a book or do some laundry and play Pac-Man, whatever it is to help kind of fill my cup personally too. Cause I am working on that professional versus personal. You gotta have, you gotta fill both sides to feel full. You do. Oh, that's wonderful. What a great example, alternating laundry and Pac-Man. I'm going to have to run that. I'm going to have to run back and begin Pac-Man past my husband this weekend. That's yeah. we've got some chores to do. And I'm, I'm just not sure that, that I want to do any of them, but, but with Pac-Man, that sounds like a better idea. I recommend it. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, Haley, thank you so much for making time and for being a guest with us today. Yes. Thanks for having me. I am excited and a little scared to edit my own voice, but that's all part of growing. So we'll do, we'll have fun with it. (laughs) Sounds great. Well, thank you. And to all of our listeners today, thanks for joining us. And on behalf of all of us at Your Clear Next Step, we hope the rest of your day is even better. Thank you for tuning in today. The Even Better Podcast will be back with more content soon. But in the meantime, subscribe to our podcast or check out our website at yourclearnextstep.com for more information. See you next episode.